Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and welcome back again. And I am sharing with you a concept that I had done probably about a year ago, where I shared some ideas about happy hypoxia in COVID-19. What really is that? It's a very unusual circumstance and something that we don't come across normally, except maybe in patients who have very severe COPD. That's like emphysema or where their airways have been, been blocked or even severe asthma, where they're used to being hypoxic. That means their oxygen saturations tend to be low. But what does that mean? Here, I'm going to give you an idea when we talk about oxygen saturations. So for the normal person, maximum is about 100%. If you put somebody on high flow oxygen, they'd go up to 100%. They wouldn't go higher than that. Most people are above 95%. All right. Sometimes smokers can drop to about 94% um, or even asthmatics. Someone with COPD or end stage COPD, we tend to keep them between about 88 to 92%. That means that they, they are oftentimes on oxygen, limited exercise tolerance. So at 88%, you're actually quite significantly short of breath. A normal person can't usually drop their saturations below about 92% without feeling really, really short of breath. And less than 85%, that's pretty serious. That's a patient who probably needs to be on intensive care. And so when we talk about that concept of happy hypoxia, it seems as though it makes no sense with regards to clinical medicine. So here is an example of a case that was done probably about a year ago. And this was in Genius Hospital. Let me pull myself out of the way. So here you have a case where a woman presented to Genius General. The main problem was a wrist laceration. However, she had been falling down repeatedly at home. Her vital signs showed that she had an oxygen saturation of 70%, even though she had no respiratory complaints. This patient even on 100% oxygen, was still hypoxic and ended up on intensive care. And she was, most likely, COVID-19. This is an important point and one that we really, really need to clarify. So as I said to you about the principle about oxygen saturations, 70% in a normal person is unheard of. We don't see that. And when we think that a lot of patients who present to hospital when they're short of breath could actually be in the region of 85%, that's pretty low. So here was the concept or the post that I had shared that was probably about a year ago. And I'll share with you the, um, the principle. So here you have one year ago, I had shared this post. And what I had said in it is that how does happy hypoxia relate to autoimmunity in COVID-19? Um, in some patients, very low oxygen levels in the blood are not accompanied by oxygen hunger. That means where you're struggling to breathe, like what you would see in an asthmatic. And most people, even with a chest infection, will feel short of breath. This is unusual with regards to COVID-19. So my question was, how did that relate to autoimmunity? This is what I've been talking about all the time in COVID-19. This is an immune response. How would happy hypoxia relate to autoimmunity? Let's just remember that concept of low oxygen saturations. Why would it occur? Well, here is the breakthrough concept. Essentially, what I said is that there are two parts of the body that are very important in measuring oxygen tension or the amount of oxygen in blood. One of them are on both sides in the neck, the carotid bodies, and the other ones are just above the heart in the aorta, the big artery coming out of the heart called the aortic bodies. If these locations are not sensitive to oxygen, then you are likely to not be aware when your oxygen tensions drop quite low. 
And you know what's most interesting? These areas, the carotid bodies and the aortic bodies lower down, they are have concentrations of ACE2. That's the same intra-receptor for SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. And our principal, our research in um, COVID-19 has pointed to the fact that autoantibodies against ACE2, which would be also on the carotid body and the aortic bodies, could damage these organs, making them not sensitive to low oxygen tension. And this is why patients could then come into hospital with very low oxygen saturations. So as I had looked at this point, this is a picture of a chest X-ray, it looks pretty clear. Normally in COVID-19, you see a number of lines here showing up. But here were some of the points that were said. This person, this is Sanja, um, in, in Eastern Europe had shared this, this paper about pulmonary critic um, that I'd mentioned with Genius Hospital about patients who have turned up with low oxygen saturations. Um, this person, James, um, said he suspected that physical activity uh, is minimal to offset oxygen consumption. Again, these patients barely notice that they haven't got oxygen. And so it's quite, um, quite remarkable. Um, this here was autoimmune system in those kept locked down in long-term care, such as assisted living and care homes, will result in perhaps more deaths than COVID-19. We need research on this phenomenon. I completely agree. It is quite a remarkable concept that you can have oxygen saturations, look at the numbers again, of less than 70% and people sometimes don't have any symptoms. Remarkable things that we see in COVID-19. Just remember this, it is essential for us to look at all the research and to ensure that every part of our research is relevant and able to explain the symptoms in COVID-19. As far as I'm concerned, happy hypoxia in COVID-19 fits with the principle that we are dealing with an immune-mediated disease one that is able to damage those parts of the body that are able to sense oxygen tension and therefore make people less aware that they're becoming short of breath. What is the takeaway point? This is where it's useful if you have a family member who has COVID-19 to have an oxygen measuring tool at home that you can put on your finger. That's what we call um, um, for to measure oxygen saturations because if you're finding that it is falling, even though the person may not be symptomatic, they may need to go into hospital. Based on our research, that would probably be when they need steroids as well. But that's enough for today. I hope you found this useful and look out for our next presentation, hopefully in another few days, as I continue to go through some of the old posts that I have done with regards to COVID-19. Have a great evening.